Good morning, everyone. Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art here again today. I told you we we're going to paint some hats today. So no, I'm not painting canvas. I'm going to paint this straw hat. I love to paint things that aren't canvas. And you guys have seen me paint all sorts of glassware and shoes and tote bags and you name it, wood, rocks. So remember when you're out um, scouting around and you see something you could paint on, it doesn't always have to be a canvas. So this is um, this is kind of a weird surface. It's a straw hat. And I practiced a little bit on the inside to see how the paint would take. And it does come through a little bit. But we're going to paint on the front, so it doesn't matter. We don't care if it goes through into the inside a little bit. Good morning, you guys. Thanks for watching. I see you're coming on, so do say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm in Maine right now at my camp, and uh, so it's a nice sunny day, but yet still cold. I know I was chatting with you all yesterday when we painted the little magnets. It's still a little chilly, but it is very sunny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ordinary acrylic paints, just the craft paints. You could use your heavy body acrylics in the tubes, whatever acrylic you want to use. Because of the surface and it's a little rough, I'm going to use my hog bristle brush at least to get that base coat down and in, in, into the fabric. And then I may go and use some of my synthetic brushes. And as you know, I've told you a bunch of times, I paint from dark to light usually. Hey, Karen, good morning. How are you today? Um, thanks for watching. And I'm going to go from dark to light. So I'm going to paint sunflowers on this this is going to be like my beach hat, or it could be, um, I'm actually going out to New Mexico on Monday uh, next to paint, plein air paint. So I'm going to need a wide brim hat out there. I'm going to start my sunflowers with an orangey color. So if you have an orange, um, a bitter, uh, burnt orange, whatever, I've got a couple of yellows out, a, a deep gold, a uh, cad yellow white, a couple of shades of green, a little bit of black and brown for the center of these sunflowers. And I'm going to start with this orangey color here. And I'm going to just paint in my sunflowers. And then I'm going to build them up lighter as that paint dries. Good morning, Shelby. Nice to see you. And like I said, you're going to have to really get that paint into these nooks and crannies and grooves a little bit. Thus the uh, hog bristle brush. And I'm going to paint the flowers first. Sometimes I paint on the leaves and then like we did yesterday on the, on the magnets and then the flowers on top. But let's just hop in and get some base into them uh, for the sunflowers. It is a little awkward to work on and I'm going to try to hold it at a, at a good angle, but it's a little, um, a little awkward. I think I'll bring the camera up a little so you'll have a little bit more room. So let me, let me just do that. And that way you can see maybe um, I can, I have room to hold it up. I'm putting my petals in, but I know it's orange. They're going to be sunflowers. You could do this with other flowers. If you wanted to do a daisy the way I'm doing this, you could just base coat it maybe with like a blue-gray and then work up to the white. So, hey, you guys are great for all just popping in. Well, Karen, you just watch for now. I know what you're going through, and I love that you are still working on your art, and I love it when you just watch. And most people watch first and paint later, and... Um, I'm just glad you're here. So can you see, I'm just getting a base coat of orange on there. I'm scrubbing in a little bit with my brush. I'm not worried if it doesn't go in every nook and cranny. It's in there enough to be a base. And, it, and when we put our yellows on, it's get a little brighter and then a bright yellow and uh, it's gonna work its way up to be a nice sunflower. I put one in the middle. I'll put some more around it. Now, sometimes you can put a whole sunflower again. It's gonna overlap this one. Sometimes you can put a few little petals just peeking out, and I'll show you what I mean. I do, I'll do that, too. I'm going to just put, and I know I'm putting them on as petals. You can kind of see, but if it looks like a big blob, that's all right. We're, gonna, we're going to put uh, our individual petals on top, and you will see them more then. If you want, I, I like to extend the design right around. So I'm going to put a few. These are going to be just little bits of a sunflower peeking out, just a little bit. Now I'm going to paint the leaves next so that this has a little chance to dry. I do have my hair dryer handy in case we want to really zap it. But sometimes I hate, you know, to put that on and have that noise. But if I do, I will mute so you do not have to listen to the hair dryer. So uh, again, thank you guys for watching and popping in. Say hello when you do. I am going to do my leaves in, it's a very dark green. I know it looks black, very dark green and a lime green. I'm going to put them in. I, I didn't even wash my brush off. I just wiped it off. I'm going to a darker color. When I need to go into the yellows, of course, I'll wash my brush off, but I will try very carefully to get all the water and moisture out of that brush. Hey, Debbie, 
morning. Hi, hi, Patty. You guys are, are great to spend a Monday morning with me. Thank you. It won't take long to do this, believe me. And I've bought, just a quick show you, I was at Hobby Lobby. This hat was like maybe $7.99. And then they had these cowboy hats, which are going to be great for painting on. So I'm going to tackle those one of these days too. So that might be fun. Since I'm going to New Mexico, I'll need a cowboy hat too. Okay, so we'll just base in the flowers, uh, excuse me, the leaves now. Just a rough leaf shape. Again, sometimes it could just be a little bit of a leaf peeking out from behind. Sometimes it can be a leaf all by itself. They could be some small leaves coming out. Can you see I'm just building up like a little bit of a bouquet sort of thing? We did this yesterday. If you didn't catch me yesterday painting the little magnets, we painted all these little magnets. Uh, actually, they're tiny little canvases. They're tiny little canvases. I'm going to put a magnet, uh, adhesive magnet strip on the back. And that's uh, something that we painted yesterday that's on the page. So go ahead and look for that. You'll find it um, right in one of the posts above. I will be uploading them to my YouTube channel too. So you'll find them there. Tinker's Cart Art on YouTube. And so I'm not worrying about copying exactly what I did on this side. I'm, I'm, I've got three leaves. I've got some little ones. I think I might want a few leaves peeking out here. How many of you like to paint on crazy things like I do? I'm actually getting ready to paint the sign here at my camp. It's the big wooden carved sign that needs scaffolding and everything. So I will, uh, I'll show you that when I'm working on it, maybe the end of this week. So if it's not standing still, I will paint on it. Check in to my videos and you'll see the ones where I painted the little canvas shoes. We paint um, ceramic pieces, glass pieces, all sorts of fun things. So there we are. Some base coating just for the sunflowers and some base coating for the leaves. I'm going to rinse my brush off now. I'm going to pull my comments up. I've got my comments here. So if you want to say hello, please do. Or if you have any questions at all. You'll find me going live all this week because I'm excited to say, and you probably have heard it a thousand times, so I apologize if you're getting so many emails and posts, but it's so hard to get things out there um, that, so that everybody sees it. And I don't want anybody to miss it. The, my art membership is open this week, and that is a really fun membership where you get to paint with me four times in the month, two, li uh, two lives, uh, two recorded. We do a tutorial every month live where we all hang out and paint or we, or for instance, like we did a tutorial that was just painting waves one night. So we just practiced and painted waves um, and just chatted and had a Q&A. Then we have a live class together by Zoom every month. And then you get two recorded classes. You, If you join, you also get access to the whole last year's content. Easy to find, easy to search on the uh, platform. So it's a lot of it's a lot of painting, um, but you don't have to watch it all. You can watch what you like. What you you can search out landscapes or seascapes or animals or still lifes, whatever you want to paint. And the monthly price is way less than even one paint night. So it's a great deal, but there's no commitment. So I'm not a good salesperson. But if you want to join and try it, I would love that. You don't have to stay a member if it doesn't if it's not for you. Oh, Patty, I love to paint rocks, too, and I'm at the beach, so I'm always collecting them. And they are cute in the garden or just, you know, how people hide them, put a little inspirational saying and put it here and there. They're so much fun. I have some here I've painted, um, but I don't want to go and grab them now. But I will show you guys. I'll put some pictures up, too, of that. So um, anyways, let's get more of the hat, less of me. All right, so I'm going to go now. Actually, I was going to go into my leaves, but let's let's work on the flowers. I'm letting things dry. I'm hopping around. I know I paint fast. Lots of times I paint fast because I want to blend my colors while they're wet. So you can always watch and go back and stop and start the videos too. So now I'm going to my yellows, but I'm going to start with my golden yellow, the deeper yellow, because I said I was going to work from dark to light. And sunflowers, unlike the daisies, have a lot more petals and layered petals. So I'm going to make a lot more little petals on top here. I'm going to start with these guys on the side because they're behind. So I'm going to just start putting in some little petals. It's hard on this texture to get an actual petal shape. But once we, we get our color on there and get our centers, and you're going to know that they're sunflowers. For now, I'm putting the yellow on. It's rough. The texture is rough, but I like the way it's sort of gliding across the top and leaving some of that orange showing through. So now I'm going to get the shapes of my big sunflowers in the front. I'm really just patting this paint on there. It's really not in any shape of a petal at the moment. It's just getting some of that yellow 
looks like a big blob but look you can kind of see his flowers kind of coming through a little bit flowers going to come through and when we do that light yellow and then we do that light yellow with some white i'll use my softer brush and try to really get a petal shape there but if i just keep on going because look at that's not it is looking pretty good on the camera that's the trick sometimes is in person, it looks awful, and, and we all know all of our paintings, no matter what, go through the ugly duckling stage, and we don't like it, and it doesn't look like yours or mine or the other person's. Don't worry about that. Um, wait till the end. Give yourself some grace, and wait till the end, and you'll see how it turns out, and it's never going to look like mine because that's not what we want. We're not striving to get all the paint, all you to paint just like me. I show you how I do it. You do it your own way and you just go ahead and have fun with it. And that is great because if they all look the same, they might as well come out of a, um, you know, a machine could have made them. I'm going to uh, pop on some of that lighter yellow. Can you see it's now I can see three shades. I've got some orange. I've got some gold. Now I've got some bright yellow on top. Hey, Edwin. Hey, Sharon, Patty, everybody, Crystal. Thank you guys for watching. And my last coat is going to be a brighter yellow, a lighter yellow. I'm going to mix some white with that yellow. But for now, I'm throwing it on there. I am going in sort of the shape I would make a petal outside to the center in. But it still is a little, like I say, it's a little blobby to me. I'm looking so close. But when I look at it on the camera or far away, it looks more like a flower. That's a tip, too. Don't be looking at your paintings like this and saying, oh, my God, I hate it. It looks awful. No one's going to see it from there, and you can't even see it properly. Step away four feet, and then you tell me that um, what it looks like, and it'll cut. It'll start coming around for you. Super fun. It looks like a blob, of course, but am I going to worry and fuss about it? No, I'm going to just enjoy the process. The process is the best part, you guys. If you sit down and you enjoy painting, like any other hobby or pastime, you know, you're doing a puzzle and you're enjoying the time, it doesn't matter really how it comes out. It matters that you had a nice um, afternoon of something that you enjoyed. So think of it a little bit as the process more than, oh, what's it going to look like when it's all done? So let's try to enjoy the time we have painting. All right, so let's let that dry a tiny bit. We're going to do our leaves. I might throw some little white flowers in here. We'll see. But I'm going to now, I'm going into a, a, a darker color. So I'm just wiping off the brush, and then I'll go right into my, it's kind of a lime green. And I do love, I use that lime green. It's like an apple green. I use it a lot. Not a color you can't, you can mix if you have your primaries in the membership. And, and when I'm doing classes, many times I really try to uh, stress that you really just need your primary colors and help you mix from there. But I'm sure, like me, you love to go in and buy all the colors, too, because I just love all the colors. I have them all sitting here, too. So now I've got my dark leaf. I want to just brighten it up a little. I'm just brushing over it a little bit with some of that lime green. So it's my dark base, getting a little lighter. I'm still going to go lighter with a little bit of a white highlight with the green on that. But for now, I'm just painting a few little strokes of lime green on my dark leaves, dark to light. I, I go most times dark to light, dark to light, which is a complete opposite of when we're watercolor painting because we have to leave our lights. I love with the acrylics that you could go back and just pop those lights on at the end and make everything pop. So let me give you a little close view. So all it was is sort of leaf shapes in a dark green. Hi, Aunt Nancy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And um, then I just popped on some heavy. I'm using the paint heavy on this because of the fabric or the texture of the straw. I'm going on pretty heavy. Now I want a little highlight. You see, when I do my leaves like we did yesterday, even though they're little tiny ones, I've got the green leaf, but a dark on one side, kind of a light. I'm not going to worry about dark on this one, but I do want to get a little light on one side of my leaves. So what I'm doing, taking my brush into the green, but look, I'm going to take a tiny bit of white on the corner. I always have trouble finding the camera. There you are. So as you can see, I've got both colors on my brush at once. And then I just pat it off a little bit. Might not even have to pat it off because of the texture of this. I really want to pat it on well. I'm just going to go on one side and give a little white highlight on my leave. Now, because it's on the camera and I can really tell what's wrong and what's right, I, I see it's very bright. I'm just going to soften it a little. So if you ever have a problem when you're painting and something looks wrong or off, hold it up into a mirror or take a picture. Because when I'm looking at the video, I have a better idea of what's working and what isn't, more so than when I'm just looking at it like this. So I'm taking my green each stroke and a little tiny bit of white. And just on the, on the 
left side of those leaves, I'd keep it consistent because if it was sort of a light source, right, it's not really on a little little bit of decorative painting like this, but I'm just going to keep it on the, depending on what way you're looking at it, I've got it on the left side. But can you see now from a distance, you are looking at leaves that have a little shading. Hi, Zena. I know, I, I find cool things when I'm shopping or yard sailing or flea marketing to paint on. So keep your eyes out for some fun things. And I'd love if you shared some of the things that you painted, please. I'd love to see your paintings. So I'm gonna just continue on and get that lighter edge on my leaves. Maybe veins in them might not need it where this is such a um, textured surface. Those little cowboy hats I just showed you, those will be much a smoother surface. And you could certainly, if you say you don't have the hog bristle brushes, don't even worry. You could use your your um, synthetics. Use what you have. I'm a, I'm a proponent of using what you have until it won't work anymore. And if you need to find something, another tool, that's fine. But I uh, used what you have. Oh, Nancy, thank you. Did you watch yesterday when we did the little magnets? Those were fun. I have some fun projects planned for the week. I'm going to do my Tree of Life, which was one of my very first paint night paintings in 2018. I'm going to paint it on. I found this. I know Hobby Lobby has the craziest things, but look at it. It's an octagon-shaped canvas. So I'm going to paint my Tree of Life on that sometime this week. So keep a watch on the page. I am going to jump in live um, all week and paint for you guys. I do that often, but because it's the opening of my membership this week, I'm really going to be out there. I do notify you by text if you um, want me to send you a quick text on when I'm jumping on. I can do that, and I and I said I'm in my place in Maine, so I don't have all my stuff, but I'll just write the number again on the back of this. If you join the text, um, what's the number, 315, what, my texting list, I will give you a little notification when I go live and paint. So it's, there it is. 978, that's 315. My writing on the back side of my palette is not neat. 5650. Um, you know what I'll try to do is I'll put it on the screen somewhere too as we go. And now I've just spilled my paint because that's probably not the best place to have written that number. But I will text you if you would like when I'm doing something. Good morning, Michelle. My friend Michelle is an amazing artist and she is a mixed media artist and she is opening a membership next week. So we're online membership buddies. And if you have an interest in mixed media and art journaling, oh my God, the journaling is uh, the best. So yeah, that's great. Okay, I've got my leaves done. I wanna get those nice bright petals on my sunflower. Michelle, I can wear this hat when I come down to Florida next time for the sun. So this time it's going to be very light. I got a little bit of my yellow. I'm going to go a lot of white. Mix that up a little bit. And let's see if we can this time get some petal shapes. Maybe I'll switch to my Filbert um, synthetic and see if that works. If not, I'll pop back with the hog bristle. Hi, Charlotte. Charlotte's one of my members. And Zena too. And we have fun, right, ladies? We have fun in our group. We, we uh, paint all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm just going to go on and make these petal shapes now. And can you see now it's a little more petal like again, we're not going to get a perfect petal like we would on a smooth surface. So I'm going to just make all these petals. Let me see if I can do it so you can see. And we'll get our centers on and they're going to read as sunflowers, even though it looks a little abstract and blobby right now. I have not painted on straw before. I hop on with you guys without even practicing half the time and hoping that it comes out okay. And, and sometimes it probably doesn't, but it's all an experiment. I did do my tiny experiment of painting on the inside. I, I blob. That was my prep work for this. But just it looks like sunflowers right from your view, does it? Hi, Linda. Linda is one of my members too. She does amazing work. She's doing all kinds of cool stuff. You guys, if you, um, I don't know if you can put a picture in the comment. Maybe you can't, but I was going to say, show the, show the people your cool artwork. I'm so proud of my, my people. All right. So very abstract, but from a distance, it looks like sunflowers. You don't have to be right on top of it and see what it is. We'll blob some big circles. Those big middle of the sunflowers are those big happy faces. I'm using a little black in my brown only because I like a dark, dark brown for their centers. They're almost black. They're big circles. Happy little faces. Like I said yesterday, it'd be fun to paint a little face. I actually have a photo. I took my orange sunglasses once and put it on this big, huge sunflower. And it was a great photo. And I thought, I should paint that and paint the little sunglasses on them, on my sunflowers. 
it turned into a blob with my sunflower in my little bit of peeking back here, but I can put a little center so it looks like it's peeking through, right? That's okay. Thanks, Patty. Okay, Michelle, good, because it's a distance. You, you know how we criticize our work if we're too close and we think it's awful, but when you stand back, it sort of comes alive. So that's what we do here. Thanks, Lynn. I'm glad you like it. Okay, so I'm going to try putting in a few uh, veins on my leaves just to see if it shows. I'll try white to see. As I do when I'm painting any sort of detail, and even on this hat, I'm not sure how it will work, but when I do detail work, like veins and little tiny lines, I thin my paint down with a lot of water. I'm going to try it here and see what happens. I may have to do a dark, dark, dark vein, but I don't know. I think the white might work. So the little vein would just be a little line coming out of the middle of the leaf. Very vague. You might not need it. You might not need it, but I'm going to put them in. I wouldn't ordinarily maybe paint this bright and thick on a finer piece. I would try for a really thin line, but I want to see them on this heavy textured of straw. So I'm just going to paint those on. I'll show you in a minute if you didn't see the little sunflowers we painted on the magnets yesterday. You'll see what they look like when, without being big and rough and abstract like this. So I just put in a little bit of veins. I do like to always add another flower and I did it yesterday with the little white, uh, like little white daisies peeking through. I'm going to try that here too. They're not going to really look like much, but I just think there's a lot of yellow, a lot of uh, a lot of leaves, but I need a little something else. So I'm just going to pop in little petals, little petals here and there. Just breaks it up a little bit. I'm not really worrying about where they are. They could overlap a flower. They are mostly just little three petals peeking out. You could also put whole little white flowers, but I'm just putting little petals peeking out. Just adds a little something, something. Again, you could put them so, because this would be like a bouquet, say. So you would have some peeking out in the middle or on top here and there. They could be any color. I'm going to uh, pop little yellow centers in them. If there's a place and you have like a space, you could just put a whole little white flower again it's very rough but it will read from a distance as a flower and then some little uh yellow centers so i'm just going to pop a little yellow in there it's a bit of a design more sometimes than actual what would a group of sunflowers look like so the design part of my brain wants these little white accents in there carries through a yellow from the sunflower into the center so it carries that color throughout and doesn't it just add something to it right you don't have to go as big and bold. You could just do a little tiny uh, rim of sunflowers. I kind of went a little bit big. I don't know. What do you think? Hey, Kit, good morning. Now, centers. Not much we need to do with them here, but I do like to make them look like those big sunflower centers have a little dip in the middle. Lots of times I will even highlight them with purple. I just love yellow and purple. You know, take your opposites of the color wheel and you have a nice pop to your painting. So I think I'm going to take a little purple and maybe just on one side do a little C stroke. It's hard to see. Uh, um, it's hard to see because it's dark and dark. I will just put that on and I'm going to mix the purple with a little white. I wouldn't maybe always do that, but I want you to be able to see where I'm putting it. So let's just try making it a little lighter and you can kind of see that I'm just going on the side. It's just a little C stroke on the left side of the sunflower center. And then I'm going to make take that light light with a little purple and almost make a little circle. They have that little dip in the middle that's going to be like a little, it's going to look like a little dip in the middle of that sunflower. And again, it's the design part of me. It's more like I don't want a big dark hole in the middle of my flowers. Wouldn't matter what color you did this. You just want a little deco decoration on there. And the and the end, how I end them up is I make all those little pollen dots, which are cool. Yeah, Charlotte, the little shoes were so cute. And I have actually some vans that I found, brand new black vans at Savers that I'm going to paint something spooky on. Um, I'm going down to Orlando in June. Uh, my son has a horror podcast. Um, so I'm going to go down and he's going to set up at the Spooky Empire Convention. And I'm going to sell spooky painted things that I have. So I'm going to paint something spooky on my black vans. 
and I have some other uh, shoes, canvas shoes that I'm going to be painting on soon too. Hey, Linda, right? Yep, go big or go home. You got it. Okay, you can make little dots. I like the little pollen dots. And again, you do see them on flowers, but it's also a good design and element. You could do them with your detail brush. Lots of times I'll do the dots with the back of my brush. I happen to have my little metal dotty tool thing here. So I'm going to use that. Any color you have out, I just take and I dot these little dots all around the center. I'm calling them pollen dots. They don't have to be perfect little soldiers marching around the center. I'm just randomly putting them on. Sometimes it hits the center. Sometimes it hits the petal. And can you see them kind of there now? And I do it in any color. Go into any color you have out on your palette and just put some of those little dots here and there. You can see them closer on our little sunflower we did yesterday. Into the camera. There we are. Just little dots of different colors. And that's all you really need. See how quick and easy some of these things are? Sometimes it's less is more and you don't want to stress and get all caught up and take hours. Paint it a little quick sometimes. Throw the paint on there. Have fun with it and see what happens. This is this is acrylic, so not the end of the world. We can usually paint over it or, or fix it somehow. I want to put some of that orange in there too. Maybe some purple. Whatever color, little you have on your palette, just throw some little dots on there. Try to hold it up so you can see a little better. This is a weird uh, thing to paint on camera. I forgot about my little guy on the side there. Get some white dots on him. Purple, maybe. The purple shows up nice on the yellow, even though it's a little dot because it's the opposite of the, co on the color wheel. Again, use your opposites for some effects. It's kind of cool. All right, this is all we need to do. I don't think we need much more. What do you guys think? Thanks, Linda. <laughs> I, I'm always thinking. I wish my brain would shut off sometimes. But this was will be a fun little beach hat. I showed you these were actually at Hobby Lobby for $4.99. I know they're probably made of just something like almost pressed papery. But I thought with roses maybe on the white one and... I don't know, maybe daisies on the black one since I've done sunflowers already. They might be kind of fun to paint. Um, don't wear this right away because the paint will come through a little bit on the inside. If you missed it yesterday, go back and look. We did all the little cute um, canvases. I find little canvases at Michael's sometimes, the little stretched ones. But at Hobby Lobby, I found these little uh, canvas boards. They're teeny, but I, I think they'll make fun magnets. Something like this, I might even put a clear coat of poly uh, finish on it and give it a little shine, maybe. Those are fun. And again, um, the number. Let me put that on the screen in case any of you want to be on my texting list. If any of you guys have any questions, put them in. I'm right here to answer them for you. Thanks, Lisa Marie. Um, let me find my bannery thing here on StreamYard. And I know I have a banner that has my phone number somewhere. Hang on, let me look. Oh, it's a ticker, but that's annoying. It goes flashing around. Here it is. Okay, so that is the number. If you want to text me, and you will know when I go on live. But again, I'm on here a lot this week because the membership is opening. Not to keep hammering away at it, but I want to make sure you know so you don't miss it because it closes Saturday. And then I probably will open in about six months. And, and, and so far when I've opened and closed, the price has gone up. So um, it's a good deal. And I don't know how long that you know, next time when we open, it probably will go up just a couple bucks or something uh, just to get it up to where it should be. Um, any questions at all about it? Just let me know. And we we do have lots of Q&As. I know one, one day this week, maybe I'll come on and, and address. I know a lot of our struggles as painters are the same. When I ask people when they join my, my Facebook group, I always ask, what's your biggest struggle? And, and I hear the same things all the time. Where to start, time, where to paint. So we address all those things. I have some blog posts and some things that we can talk about, about finding a little space to paint, how little that you need to start. You don't need all of the supplies. Um, and how easy it is, even if you've never painted, or if you have a friend who's a little artistic but's never painted it and is afraid to start, I teach step by step by step, baby steps. I give you the tracers. You can trace the design on. It's a matter of just learning by seeing sometimes. And then you can really expand a little more with your art later. But you have to just have a little base. And that's what we do in the membership. And again, I'll just recap real quick. You get four deliverables every month. You get two recorded classes. You get um, one class that we paint together by Zoom. And you get one tutorial, which sometimes, like I said, we do waves or we do trees or we learn water drops and how to paint transparent glass. Sometimes we just hang out and paint on our own paintings and chat 
and I can help you and guide you if you're having an issue with anything. And it's a nice time to meet the fellow members, which is a big benefit of the group. It is the creative community, the private community that you're in with very encouraging and lovely people. And there's always someone around if you're stuck with a problem. And I'm on there all the time addressing things too. Some of the things we have, this was one of our paintings from, from last month there. Actually, let me just get rid of this. Let me just bring this so you can see the painting a little better. Oops, I'm back again. There. So we did this last month. It's a little sunset scene. So uh, that was in the membership. We do, like I said, all sorts of things. And we do animals a lot of times. That's the Highland Cow we did. This was back in Valentine's Day, but not something that you couldn't use any time. I really was going to do this for Mother's Day again, because just this background and this little wreath is perfect little Mother's Day gift. And you could write something in it or not. You could write something in it with a paint marker. You don't have to worry about if you are not good at script with writing. This was a popular one too, the bike, the spring bike. So if you were to join now, um, the membership, you get access to all of the whole last year's content. So that is three or four things a month. Super easy to find, easy to search. Um, and plus you're gonna get new things every month. So anyways, I'm not gonna keep you. You guys are great to watch. Thank you so much. And I will see you painting later on. So if you t if you get on my list, you'll get a text. I'm probably gonna go on, to I'll go on. I don't know if I'll go tonight, but I'll go tomorrow for sure. I'll go every day this week until we close on Saturday. So anyways, have a great day. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.